happy Sunday. It's starting to feel like fall out there and the leaves are changing and in fact is our first October week of lab and we've got a lot of, of action happening this week largely because instead of just two labs we actually do three labs. So let me pull up that schedule and take a look briefly at the fact that on Tuesday we will do lab nine, a straightforward lab on antiseptics and disinfectants, and then on Thursday we will do both labs 10 and 11. But I've received some great questions, Trevor was asking about this. We only have one pre-lab entitled lab 10 and 11 pre-lab. So for that pre-lab you can focus questions on lab 10. It's just that lab 11 is sort of doing a prep step for lab 12 that's just needed to allow us to do lab 12. So there's not a lot more to that. It's really just um, spotting some filtered sewage onto a plate so that we have it ready for us to do lab 12. Um, however, we will, we will only cover one lecture during that lab. So um, if you're signed up to give the lecture for lab 10 and 11, it is just the lecture on transformation. Now that's not an easy lecture and I do encourage only people who have had some background in recombination to take on that lecture, but it is not two lectures, it is only the one about transformation. So I hope that kind of answers some questions. Um, there's a couple of other things scheduling wise that I want to draw your attention to. Um, we do have the second lecture exam coming up on the 8th, so not this week but next. Um, and I know that a couple of, of people generally help me out with, you know, handing out exams and whatnot there. So just an awareness of what's going on during Lab 12. Um, also, I will be gone on the 11th. And thank you to those of you who have already volunteered to be there on the 11th. Kelly is going to be taking my place as sort of the supervisor there. And I imagine that um, many of you, of, of, of the others, will be there to help her out. Um, and we also have something else up and coming, the practical exam. So notice that on the 15th, we do have our first practical exam, which means a couple of things. Uh, firstly, it means that with your fellow TAs, um, that is everyone who teaches in the morning and everyone who teaches in the afternoon, we will need to come up with a version for the practical exam. Those questions are found on your jump drive. Um, very straightforward. You can choose which question you want and you can split that however you'd like amongst the morning TAs and then amongst the afternoon TAs so that in the end we have two versions of the practical, one for morning and one for afternoon. That also means that we need to set up for the practical. Um, those of you who are setting up for the afternoon version, that will mean during the lunch hour, so for between 12 and 1 on the 15th, we'll need to get set up for the afternoon version. But for those of you who are doing the morning version, we need to get set up on Monday the 14th. So uh, I will try to have most of the media ready and inoculated. I'm going to probably do that on the morning of the 11th if, if anyone's interested in helping there. But then I'll need your help on the 14th. And what I need to know is whether the morning or the afternoon works the best for you. And you can either tell me via email or in lab and we can figure out when we want to set that uh, practical up. Uh, I can make it work for a later afternoon time on the 14th or I can do earlier in the morning on the 14th. So whichever is better for all of you. Just let me know. That does mean that we will be coming up on midterm grades as well. So just thinking about keeping your Canvas entries up to date, which I think most of you do anyway. So that's already looking really good. And speaking of Canvas, um, there are a few things that I want to talk about there. So I'm actually going to go ahead and shoot to uh, Canvas and look at some of the the um, new and and unique opportunities maybe for that. And maybe some of you have found this. But before I do that, I do want to make note that I'm still looking for people for the Canvas uh, TA training group. And I want to make note of that, um, actually, uh, John and Josh have already uh, volunteered for that, or Trevor and Josh. Trevor and Josh have already volunteered for that. But um, I'm still looking for more people for that. And it will pay about $300 for the semester. So if that is of interest to you, that is, um, you know, if you TA too, you could be looking at, you know, practically enough money to buy your food <laughs> for the semester. So that would be rad. Um, okay, I'm going to pull up Canvas here at this point. And um, I want to talk about bringing a video into Canvas. So some of you may have already found this, but if you have not yet, this might be an informative process. 
So say that you do think, okay, you know, my students didn't really understand the whole thing about using a logarithmic culture to uh, test against antibiotics. So in my, um, in my pre-lab, I'm going to ask a question about that, but I want to use the RAD video that Kyle made last summer that shows the time-lapse video of E. coli growing which, by the way, if you haven't ever looked at this, it is really rad. I just played it the other day um, in lecture, and it's really fun to be able to see the turbidity in the culture change uh, as the phases of growth are changing. So maybe you want to use this YouTube link in your pre-lab to help with a visual in that pre-lab. So what you do is in the YouTube, you can go down to the share button and click on share. And uh, once you click on that, you can actually pick up the URL. It's always a good way to get the URL in case you navigated there in a strange way. So just grab that URL that'll take you to this video. And then once you're back in Canvas and you've got your pre-lab going, and I'm just gonna grab one of these unnamed quizzes, you can actually bring this video in and uh, directly have a direct have the video directly play in here. So um, you just go ahead and, and hit YouTube and it just says embed content from YouTube and you just put in the um, the link. Yeah, E. coli time lapse and bingo, there it is. And that will embed that into your quiz. So you can just hit save and um, all will be well. Uh, to have that embedded in the quiz, uh, depending on where you want to put it. I just put it in the main quiz itself, but if you would like to put it within your questions, you can do that as well, but it's just super easy, and it's way cool to be able to do that, and it, it almost makes like for a direct link to Virtual Edge, in a sense, uh, something that will play right there in the quiz. So let me know if you are having other questions about Canvas, and if there are things that are coming up. I think the only thing that I have noticed is that um, it, a couple of people have forgotten to add their pre-lab to the module. So just make sure that we, once you do get a pre-lab written and you publish it, don't forget to get in here and then click on add content and add your pre-lab to that module. I think that's really the only trouble we've run into at all and everything's been looking really good with this. But do always keep me posted with questions and also eureka moments that you might have where you might be discovering something brand new that is really cool about Canvas. Okay, cool. Um, let's go on. And um, I think I think I forgot to mention that I would really like to have your practical questions done and submitted to me by Lab 13. That is um, by the 10th of October, so that it's easy for me to get everything ready to go. So maybe what we could say is shoot for the 9th of October, and then that way I know for sure I'll have a list of those questions so that I can have the questions pulled on the morning of the 11th, and that would be super helpful to me. Um, I will be leaving on that day, you know, so if, if we can get them done before that morning, it would be really, really great. Nice. Let's take some time then to go through the uh, TA guidelines for labs 9 and 10 and 11. And their lab nine is very, very straightforward. So I don't think you'll have any big questions on what's going on lecture wise there, but we do want to summarize the lab eight results on the board so that they can see the antibiotics. And I'll go through with, with all of the sections uh, regarding a review on antibiotic target sites and how that repre is representative by their sensitivity patterns. We also will be doing the hand washing experiment during this one. and. In the TA guidelines, it mentions splitting the class into two groups. You can split the class into as many groups as you would like. We do have some hand sanitizers, so if you want to have some groups test hand sanitizers versus some testing the soap out of the um, off of the wall, that would work fine. If we even want to bring in bar soap and test that, we can do that. So whatever uh, strikes your fancy for splitting people into groups on that day, but be sure that we do announce it at the beginning so that they know what they're doing. And then lab 10 and 11, boy, this is a busy day. So on Thursday, we really need to be organized. And that uh, largely means that when the students walk in the door, they actually need to do the first few steps of lab 10. I believe it's steps one through six. It takes them all the way to the incubation on ice. Once they're incubating on ice, we will take the last group 
on the ice as our timekeepers, and we'll begin our 20-minute incubation during, uh, based on that group uh, putting their tubes on the ice. So if you are giving a lecture, then at that point you will begin the lecture. Sometimes you can get pretty far through the lecture in those 20 minutes, but you'll have that last group uh, raise their hand and say, hey, we're ready for the uh, heat shock, and then you can have them heat shock it. One thing along those lines is we want to leave things in the fridge, freezer, on ice as much as possible. In fact, in uh, a real research lab, many times you would do a transformation experiment actually in the cold room, um, dress warm that day, and, and that would actually enhance transformation efficiency. But we'll try to keep things in the fridge as long as we can. And the other thing is keeping the um, recovery buffer in the fridge until it's needed is a really good idea because oftentimes they'll take that recovery buffer instead of the sterile tubes and then that uh, causes havoc with all of their experimentation. So that's just a good idea to, to make note of. The other thing is we want to remind the students to make the predictions in Lab 10 before they leave. That will be what allow us to know whether or not they've understood the concepts. So if you can check out their predictions in their lab manual before they leave, that's super awesome. This again is a fairly technical lecture. If you're not comfortable with transformation, have me do the lecture or at least part of the lecture for you. Um, also, you know, maybe designate a TA in your group who has had more advanced coursework and can really get into the whole recombination concept. There's a little bit of background information in the guidelines, but not a ton. Um, we will also be doing the bacteriophage spotting um, of the, the sewage onto the plate. Please make sure that they use the E. coli in, in um, culture tubes for this experiment as versus the competent cells for lab 10. And so again, like we were differentiating in the last lab about um, the type of E. coli that they're using, we're going to have to do that here too, competent E. coli cells versus cells that are just grown up in culture. I think that is a wrap, and I can't wait to see you all on Tuesday.